Today we're talking about the state of the jungle in Season 5. Now I've played quite a few PTS games at this point, most of them in jungle, and I wanted to give you my first impression of how I feel about the jungle, what I think about the changes, if I think it's better, if it's worse, what exactly has changed and so on. Let's begin with the clear. The clear overall is a lot easier. Regardless of if you want to go for the new jungle starter or you want to skip that one, you will have a very easy time clearing, which is probably a good reason to skip it in quite a few situations. Solo clearing the first three camps may require you to throw in health pot if you're not using the starter, but that's pretty much about it. So there are benefits to the clear improvements that you get through the extra damage with the starter, but at the same time, for many it's not necessary as long as the camps stay on the low health that they have. This also means that quite a lot of laners can solo the camps that are close to their lane too, but this generally doesn't seem to be too much of a problem due to the fact that the camps respawn relatively quickly, you'll always find something to farm and it's not the end of the world if you have to share one wave in between either, as you still get a 60% XP split for both players, so it's not like you're making any major down trades with it. Ironically, I actually bought the wrong starter in the background footage and it still didn't set me back by too much. In the context of clear, it's worth mentioning Talaria boots. I think those are extremely potent for many many junglers now, as what you will experience is that clearing the camps won't be much of a problem, but you will still have to rotate from camp to camp and you spend a lot of time moving between camps. If you have Talaria, that time is incredibly lower overall because of the constant extra movement speed that you have, 7% for free basically, or almost for free, and you will not be able to keep up with somebody else who has Talaria in many situations, unless you have like global ults and things like that. And at the same time, Talaria also gives you a lot of gank potential with the constant movement speed it has now, so I think it's very beneficial in many regards and most junglers can make great use of it, not only Mercury. Combine that with the fact that the speed buff can basically be picked up on cooldown because it respawns right after you lose the buff and you will have no issues traversing the new much bigger map, which I think feels really nice. You just feel really really fast all the time and also your chase potential against enemies is incredibly high. If you don't build Talaria, you're gonna experience that invades on your speed buff are incredibly rough. You will not have that speed buff for 2 minutes and those 2 minutes that the enemy jungler has it and you won't have it will matter more on this new map because it's bigger. And that's just something you'd want to avoid at all costs, so you really want to make sure to be at your speed buff when it is spawning and make sure to have someone around who can help you when it spawns so it doesn't get stolen away from you. Talaria kind of countermeasures this a little bit by just giving you more movement speed right off the bat, so you have to be less concerned with that. Talking about invading. Other than stealing the buffs from the enemy, especially the speed buff, it feels like it's barely worth it overall. You have so much farm in your own jungle that you can't really deny much farm from the enemy. The respawn timers are just too short. So if you're looking to invade, it's to give your own maybe duo laner a red buff constantly and taking that away from the opponent or taking the speed buff of the enemy jungler or something like that instead of opting for invades that are more focused on stealing away not only a buff but also the XP or the gold from the enemy and depriving them of farm. And you may have noticed that this tactic was used until very recently in the SPL where the back hops were stolen by rival on cooldown basically. It wasn't working out perfectly there either but the strategy was there, I doubt that's gonna be the case now. The jungle farm overall feels absolutely sufficient at this point. I had no issues finding farm whatsoever. I would obviously from time to time still go into a wave just because it was nearby and the XP was there or because I was trying to gank and the gank maybe didn't work out as planned. But overall you would never felt forced to stay into a wave unless you just cleared the half of the map and had to go all the other way to the other side. So you would rather go for a wave and then back and then you know start from base especially with Traveler's Talaria. That often seemed to be the better option, but overall there was definitely enough farm to be had even when others cleared some of their own camps too. This translates over to being able to actually stay even in XP and gold or possibly even getting ahead. So far from what I've played at least, it wasn't the most efficient routes yet. Those will have to be figured out over time, though they're always still situational, but there will probably be a standard rotation through the spawns as other mobas typically have them in order to maximize your farm and optimize your early leveling curve. And as such, we don't really see optimized jungling yet, whereas laning in general is kind of known. There's not much you can optimize about clearing a wave and maybe going for a camp in between, compared to the jungler who can really optimize everything on his path. 
And when that is happening and you're playing a jungler with fast enough clear, I can actually imagine junglers being able to outfarm the rest of their team just by staying in the jungle and rotating from camp to camp quickly enough. This is not so much down to the XP and gold values that have changed, but rather to the fact that the camps are cleared so quickly, they respawn quickly and lane minions are comparatively slower cleared, while also being less rewarding at the start. The only camp that feels like an outlier here are the oracles. The oracles are incredibly strong at this point compared to any other camp. They have a lot of health tankiness and deal a decent amount of damage. It's actually the only camp where I had to back out because I couldn't solo them at some point when I didn't have the jungle item. So that's something worth paying attention to. They are probably easier done either with your mid laner or just have your dual lane do them instead of you. Splitting camps is not absolutely unviable, though I don't see much of a point in doing it. You still get that extra 10% XP, sure, but overall it just slows you down to have a mid laner with you that doesn't have the speed buff for example, or anything other than those camps that I ride next to the lanes so you can help out when they're coming over already. So if they're clearing a wave and they're going to the camp after, sure, you split the camp and it makes sense, but outside of that I don't really see much of a reason to do so, especially with the old Bamba's passive no longer being in the game that would allow for gold sharing of some sort. The started speed buff to me personally feels a lot better than the other meta we had. Sure, it's forced, but at the same time, I prefer just having that speed buff on level 1 before anything else and being able to stay in the jungle if I want to right after that as well. It's just nice to not have to start in lane or not have to consider that because your buff will spawn earlier and it's more likely that we'll probably be seeing the buff being soloed most of the time, whereas the mid laner starts in mid already as otherwise the mid laner is kind of late for his own wave. Now you could have the mid laner and jungler go to mid together afterwards as well, but I'm expecting that it's more likely that speed will be soloed, which will also bring the jungler to an earlier level 2 and the clearing time of the camp is really really short anyways. The pathing choices after that in terms of clearing rotation will be very interesting, we've only seen the start of that so far. There could be possibilities to go for blue first and share that with your solo, or you could go for the harpy camp and just get that little bit of extra XP, maybe some rotation towards mid and picking up blue later on. Many many options, we'll see what it turns out to be the winner of that later down the road. For all we know, the jungler might also rotate over to the other buff camps, which give a significantly higher XP value than most other camps on the map early on. In terms of ganking, I feel like not all too much has actually changed. Yes, you have the different passages into the lanes, but overall the positioning feels kind of similar for the entrances and ganking still kind of feels the same. What feels different is everything that happens after the initiation in the gank. Due to the map and also the lanes being larger, the enemies will have a harder time getting back to that tower or getting out of the lane and maybe off into the jungle because there's just so much space for them to be bullied down first. And in that context, once again, I think Talaria is incredibly strong as if an enemy has such a hard time even getting to that tower, it will be made even harder if you have more movement speed and can land more basics throughout and catch up to them multiple times. Likewise, fights in the jungle also feel different, with there being a lot more walls around it. Certain characters kind of have an advantage and others fall behind a little bit. For example, a good character in the jungle would be Anhor or Ho Yi, but generally speaking, hunters will have a harder time trading in the jungle because there are so many walls and pillars, which generally especially favor assassins or warriors for those engagements there, with those small niches and those harder ways to get out, but a lot of openings for them to juke around. Coming back to ganks for a second, so far I find it a little bit hard to predict if an enemy will see you. You kind of have to realize that you're usually in that fog and they won't necessarily know you're there right away, but then again they might see you through the fog as well and it's kind of hard to get a feel for when they see you and when they don't, but that's something we'll get used to over time once we get used to the new map and especially to the fog. Overall I have to say the new map feels very refreshing. You can argue about the art style as much as you want. I will note by the way that I'm currently playing on medium settings because I don't want to have any glitches which sometimes happen on high settings when new things come out and I still think it looks nice enough. But at the end of the day for me it's more important how the map feels and how the structure of the map is than the actual look and in that regard I am very very happy. I think most of the changes that were made were especially nice for junglers and being able to run through the jungle on your own without depending on anyone around you is just something I've been wanting to do for seasons and seasons and seasons and now it finally seems to be a possible and viable option. And with that, thank you guys for watching. I'd love to hear your opinion down in the comments if you've played jungle on PTS or PTS in general already and what you think about those changes overall. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. 
other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out. So I actually figured out my demonetization issue and it was my outro. As such, feel free to click any of the links around here right now. There will be new outro music as soon as I find something nice. Until then, as you guys requested, I will do the outro music myself. You're welcome.